where Jesus is Lord. Well, we praise God for another day, for another privilege and glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you had a splendid weekend, you had beautiful weather. God has been great to us. And we're about to indulge into a new, a new phase. We're going to shift. We're going to make a shift and begin to flow with the Spirit of God and get in tune with what God is doing. Do you remember in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33? Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. One translation says, the God's way of doing things, God's way of doing right. You'll find that also in the book of Psalm, uh, when the Bible talks about Moses. He showed his acts unto the children of Israel, but Moses knew his ways. We really need to know God's ways, what he thinks, how he wants us to flow. Um, his wisdom, what the Bible calls, what the Bible says, his word. His word was given to us that his thoughts, which are higher than ours, his ways that are much, much higher than ours. That's why he gave us his word, so we can think on a higher level. In order for us, as human beings, as people of God, to go to a higher level, another in other words, the place where God wants us to be, we have to think on a higher level. We can't think uh, with the natural mind and do the great things that God wants us to do. We have to think on a totally different level. And in order to think on another level... It is imperative that we feed on another level. Did you get that? In order to go higher, we have to think higher. In order to think higher, there has to be a paradigm shift. Yes. Something has to happen on the inside of us that illuminates our spirits, illuminates our minds, and gives us what the Bible calls a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I've said this before. Jesus asked a question in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Who do men say that I am? And they had some splendid answers. They weren't really bad answers. <laughs> when you start saying the prophets and you start calling these great men of God out, they're not bad answers, but they weren't the correct answer. Watch this. I'm going to divert just for a second. The Bible says that we should renew our minds to know the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Notice those levels. Good, acceptable, and then there's the perfect will of God. So there are some things in life, things that we say, decisions that we make that are good. Some of them are even acceptable, but we should be seeking for the perfect will of God for our lives. And so those answers that the apostles gave were not necessarily bad answers. They were good. In some cases, they might have even been acceptable, but it wasn't perfect. Watch this. Perfection came. Perfection came. When the revelation came, let me define perfection. Maturity. Ooh, correctness the growing up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the place where God wants us to be, comes by revelation. Hence Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Glory be to God. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. You heard what he said? Blessed. The word blessed has several meanings, but the most powerful one, is empowered to prosper. Watch this. Revelation empowers you. Say that with me. Revelation empowers me. It gives me power because something happens on the inside that my natural mind can't even fathom or figure out. Another level of thinking. Glory be to God. And that's how we're going to start our prayer today. We're going to believe God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We need him to unveil some things to us. We need, we need help. We need help. We need insight in the things that, that we can't find in the textbook. We need insight in the things that we're not going to find in, in, in some type of manual. We, we, need, we need a divine sentence from the lips of the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, and Only Wise God. My name is Dr. Garen Gatling. I'm a minister of the gospel, a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have a lot of word in me. A lot of word before me, a lot of notes that the Holy Spirit has given me some fresh stuff. And so it's imperative, it's imperative, extremely vital um, that I'm tuned into what God is doing and saying, and that you're tuned in. So we're going to pray that God needs to raise our spiritual antennas today to hear from heaven. The Bible says today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We have to hear from him. We have to hear from him. 
We need insight into things that we don't know anything about. We need divine secrets. We need to know how to maneuver in life, how to face stuff on another level. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. The thing that we go up against, the Bible calls wrestling not against flesh and blood. There are principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So the demonic forces out there are stirring up a lot of junk, stirring up a lot of junk. And in order to deal with it, our pistols and our fists and knives and all that stuff is not going to work. God has given us divine ability to stop the enemy in his place, stop him in his place, stop his depression, stop debt, stop despondency, glory to God, stop disease, stop the adversary in his tracks, make the enemy back up off of you, glory to God. And that's, that's my purpose, I love this stuff. This is real, this is a supernatural thing, it's real folks, it's real. I want to quickly give honor to my bishop, Dr. Glenn A. Staples. I am a man under authority, um, and I'm so glad I am. That's the way to go, to, be, to honor God's government. My man of God is a wonderful man of God, Bishop Glenn A. Staples. His church is at 700 Southern Avenue in Southeast Washington, D.C. Uh, he'll be preaching this Wednesday night coming up at Greater Mount Calvary uh, Church here in the district. Uh, so be there at 7.30 uh, p.m. this week. Church services still will be held at the Temple of Praise at 700 Southern Avenue Southeast in Washington, D.D. So, someone will be there uh, at 7.30 uh, for our normal Wednesday night Bible study. However, the bishop will be in an engagement preaching at Greater Mount Calvary. And so join him, if you will. I will be there to hear the bishop uh, minister the words. Great man of God. And I honor him as well as Apostle and Dr. Anthony T. Mays, the grant apostle of this ministry. I honor authority. I just really do. Father, in the name of Jesus. I plead nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. Not my own ways, not my own thoughts, not my own anything. I solely lean on Jesus' name as I begin to minister to the people, thousands of people listening all over the world, all over the world, all over the world. And your word says that we should go in all the world and preach the gospel. And so in order for me to do this accurately and effectively, I need your power I thank you for the office in which I stand, for your anointing, for the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, the distributions of the Holy Ghost, the confirmation of the gospel. As I preach your word, I thank you, Father, for meeting the needs of the people. They're facing all kinds of stuff. People need a word from heaven. They don't need my own intellect. They don't need my enticing words of man's wisdom. They need to hear from you demonstration of the Spirit and power. And so I plead nothing but the blood as I yield myself to you. Speak through your servant. Put your word on my lips, Father. Help my thoughts to flow with your thoughts, to meet the needs of the people, for people to be saved, healed, delivered, burdens removed, yokes destroyed. That's the purpose of preaching this glorious gospel of your son Jesus. And so I thank you for it. I want people to be encouraged today, so I thank you for encouragement. I want people to receive their healing. Even as I speak, I'm expecting you, Father, to do supernatural things. You don't have me doing this for nothing. Thank you for confirming your word. Thank you for people being delivered and cured of cancer and diseases. Even as I speak, an anointed word to remove the burden, destroy the works of the enemy. As it is written, you've anointed your servant, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Well, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Father, according to your word. And as a member of the body of Christ, I continue his work of setting captives free. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. We've been talking about, for the last several weeks, the success flow. Not success Flow, F-U-L, but flow, F-L-O-W. And we found out that the word success literally means to excel to the highest place in any endeavor or thing in which you desire. In other words, the accomplishment of your goals, the accomplishment of your objectives, the fulfillment of that thing on the inside of you, the thing you desire, the vision, the hope, the dream coming to pass, success. Then we found out from the book of Joshua, let me read that verse, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, 
but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Watch this. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have, watch this, folks, good success. Say that with me. Good success. And so good success, as defined uh, in the Hebrew from this verse, literally means to deal wisely in the affairs of life. In fact, if you have a more modern translation, it will literally say that, to deal wisely. Glory to God. That's how God wants us to flow. He wants us to flow in success wisely. Now, the success flow is defined according to the Word of God. In this verse here, back up to verse 7, the Bible says, You'll prosper whithersoever thou go. It doesn't matter where you go. Let's flip over to Psalm 1. I'm laying your foundation and reminding you of some things, reviewing some things. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Say that, whatever I do shall prosper. So according to Joshua 1 in this verse, the success flow is defined as no matter where I go, no matter what I do, watch this, I prosper. I have good success. I know how to maneuver in life. Glory be to God. Coming to a place where it doesn't matter what city I go into. Where it doesn't matter what place I go into. doesn't matter what situation I face. What storm I face. Whatever the vicissitude of life is, I can come to a place. Watch me carefully, people. Listen, listen, listen. It's a process, but we can eventually come to a place where it doesn't matter where we go. We win. Folks, that's in the Bible. I got that right out the book. I didn't make that up. I didn't get that out the Washington Post. I didn't go online and look. I didn't get none of that stuff. This is in the Bible that God desires that we have success in life and that we flow in that success. Listen to this. I got this from the Lord this morning. Success is supposed to flow. Did you hear that? In other words, it's supposed to be a normal thing, folks. The Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion. Did you hear that? Doesn't that sound like success? And then, and then he told the man, be fruitful and multiply. Listen to me carefully. I heard my bishop say this one statement I'm saying now. He commands us to be successful. Did you get that? He commanded the man to be fruitful. I command you to multiply, to increase, to overflow. Glory to God. Somebody say overflow. Yeah, we're commanded to produce. So, so, so success is supposed to flow. It should have flowed from Adam and Eve into their child. Their child goes up and passes it on to their child. Their child goes up and passes it on to their child. We should be a species of being that is successful. Everybody. Glory to God. God. God didn't create this world to flow in failure. He wants us to succeed in life. He wants us to win in life. Somebody say this with me. I am destined to reign. Say this. I'm supposed to be successful. Glory to God. My, my, my spiritual makeup, glory to God, propels me into victory. There's an aroma of victory when I step in the room. And watch it. It's not based upon my own ability. No. Success is an anointing. It's an enablement that comes from heaven. It's God working on the inside of me and causing me to rule and to reign and to dominate in life. It's him. It's called the abundant life. It's an abundant life. It's a life where... Where, where I overflow in victory. Not just go to heaven. Thank God my name is written in the land book of life. But while I'm here on earth, I can walk in victory. I can win in life. Isn't that powerful? And the thing I love about it so much is this is not something I made up. It's in the Bible. Glory to God. And the Bible says in the book of uh, Numbers, God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man. This is God's stuff. 
Glory to God. And so I want to look back.